You guys remember when Steve was talking about the new EK loopholes and he said this? So, Jay, please, we need you to build a PC for exhibit to complete the meme. Yo, dog, we heard you like water cooling. So we water cooled your water cooling. Well, we got him right here. Never mind the condition at which EK sent them to me in, though. <laughs> For those looking for a high-end custom gaming experience, look no further than Falcon Northwest. Falcon Northwest has been building PCs made for gamers for over 30 years with a focus on a true high-end gaming experience. Custom cases available only through Falcon Northwest feature state-of-the-art testing and design to ensure that every component is performing at their best through thermal imaging and rigorous lab testing designed and overseen by the Falcon Northwest founder himself. With a complete lineup of systems ranging from small to large, every Falcon Northwest system includes a three-year warranty policy and a year of two-way overnight shipping coverage providing the ultimate peace of mind. To see all that Falcon Northwest has to offer, follow the sponsored link in the description below. To be fair, it does say sample, but I swear to God, if anything ever arrived to a customer looking like that from EK, I would, uh, well, I'd pretty much lose my stuff because no, <laughs> nothing should ever arrive to a customer like that. Uh, this is the silver one. This is the black one. So here's the thing. The loophole is a product that absolutely has no discernible reason to exist, to be honest. But neither does a lot of the water cooling crap that we all use anyway, because water cooling as a whole, although becoming more necessary these days, because of the high heat that components tend to generate these days, um, it's kind of fun to customize your loops and do fun stuff. So anyway, I've never seen anything like this. It's kind of like a take on distro plates that's like, hey, you know, a couple of ports aren't probably in the right spot. For most distro plates, depending on the graphics cards and stuff that you're using, the height of your fittings, there's too, there's too many different variations. And EK can only account for their own products and how high their fittings are and all that sort of stuff. So they basically said, you know what, let's give them 32 options. Let's give them 32 options on a distro plate, but let's also complicate it as much as we possibly can by not making it just a distro plate where fluid goes in it, where it's a distro plate where fluid can go in it and you have to tube run inside the distro plate. So this is a 490 US dollar option for uh, a distro plate slash distribution block. It really is like a distribution block rather than a plate. Dang, it's weighty though, it is super heavy. Um, as you can see right here on the mounting holes, there, 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 and there. It's designed to basically meet up with any case that gives you provisions for two 140 millimeter fans. If you have a case that can also fit two 140 millimeter fans on the back, a la like Fantex Elite, you know, big cases like that, you could run two of these bad boys if you want. And in fact, that's what I told Steve I was gonna do. I wanted to run two of them. The problem is it sent me a silver one and a black one, which I guess to be fair, it's fine because that's that were the two options that they, that they have. Um, I would kind of would want them to match. Anyway, here's all the hardware that it comes with. They're Torx instead of, okay, that's a first. Normally they use Allen, so that's a Torx. So that's, a, you could, you have to take the cover off anyway to use it. So as I mentioned, there are the 32 ports. Now these are just plugs and I don't want to scratch this up. So let me get, so these are just little covers that are just on top of the actual port. So they're, they're nice, they're nice plugs. They're not the El Cheapo plastic ones. They're literally, nickel plated like brass. So, and you'll notice how it's kind of like hollow inside. You're just like, dude, what the frick is the point of all of these? Now I kind of wonder if this would work if I were to sort of set this up as just a giant manifold, <laughs> if you would. I kind of wonder if, dude, I just realized all of these EK ones are nearly perfectly placed so the EK is the right way. So if I were to put like one like that, <laughs> would it bother you, Phil? <laughs> It would totally bother me, that's for sure. Because aside with all the black covers is what you're actually gonna be looking at. But anyway, because like I said, it's not a distro plate in the traditional sense of being a distro plate, you have to tube run inside of it. So let's say for instance, I wanted to come in one of these ports down here and I wanna go out with one of the ports up there. I have to use two 90 degree fittings inside and run a tube up to it. So it's not really simplifying a whole lot, except for the fact that I guess you're making it a lot of these runs kind of contained into one area. So let me show you what I mean. They sent over a bunch of fittings too. And you have to use their low profile fittings because standard 90 degree fittings won't work in there. I don't know if Bits Power will fit. That's another popular fitting, Bits Power slash Corsair. Um, we'll, we'll do a test to see. But you can see right here, if I go ahead and take one of these and open them up, they've got these low profile 90 degree swivel 
fittings here. So that's a standard, that's not a standard, but that's, that's their low profile 90 degree fitting. Allow me to show you what their regular ones look like. So here's the Torque Micro 90 degree, and there's a standard Torque. <laughs> so you can see why those are not gonna fit in there. However, if we look at the overall height, the uh, Bits Power is in slash Corsair, because they're the same ODM, is a little bit taller. So we're just gonna have to see now on how that's gonna work. So you got the, the Torques that are going all the way around the outside, so you have to take it apart. So there's our O-ring. Careful with that guy. And then this is just a cover. So we'll put that out of the way. You can see right here, we have one, two, three, four output options. Anything within this little channel right here is an output from the um, pump. And then the pump just feeds from this one fitting right here, I guess, which you could have going back into it, technically. Or I guess you could put a, you can't even put a fitting down in there. So you're still stuck to having to go into it at this, at one location. So you can't even really customize that as far as I can tell. Okay, so it is absolutely a reservoir on top of being an internal tube thing. So I don't know how else to describe it. So you can feed the pump right here from the reservoir. You could fill it from any of the top ports. You can return to it from any of the top ports or the bottom. I guess what you'd want to return down here probably just for percolation reasons and unless you want a waterfall, I guess you could have a waterfall going in there. I'm now wondering how well the fittings will hold up un over time and the tubing being fully submerged. I guess it should be exactly the same as tubing with fluid on the inside, on the outside. <laughs> so it's just gonna be an extra level of complication in my opinion on trying to figure out the loop order. So let's just talk about what happens on the inside, shall we? Okay, so let's say I had one right there. Yeah, that's cool. That's actually pretty cool. This this is nice, because now you know that fitting's getting all the way down in there. <laughs> this is a weird tool. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> I just broke the tool. <laughs> is it in there? It's a one-time use now. Okay, don't over-tighten like I just did, but as you can see, these rotate in there now, right? I don't think bits power will work, because look, that barely clears the O-ring. So if I put a bits power slash Corsair in there, yeah, it's sticking up higher than the, in the surface, <laughs> so that's not gonna work. You can see by looking at their fitting too, it's like perfectly set to the height to work inside this thing. Okay, so now if I were to say, I want to have another, like that's an in and an out, like basically this is just a pretty way of getting one tube to another area by going to another area of the case. So you'd be like from, let's say from CPU to loophole, through the loophole out to GPU or something, this just takes place of going direct from CPU to GPU. So it's extra tubing fittings and complication, but it also looks extremely like premium, if you will. There's that. So I would do a 90 degree bend and they are, they have to use 12 millimeter outer diameter, by the way, these are 12 millimeter um, tubes. So it'll be fine if you were to use 12 millimeters, say inside of this and then 13 or 14 elsewhere in your system, it won't be a problem. Um, unless it just bothers you knowing like, these are not the same tubes that are elsewhere in your system if you're using 13 or 14. So it'd be pretty easy. You just do a 90 degree bend, right? And then trim it where you need. And we'll do that in a second here. But then with it, you have to use their Torque Micro HDP or Hyde um, hard pipe, HDP for hard pipe, which is kind of weird. And then you have to attach this on there as well. And then this is just a little bitty micro fitting. So it doesn't even have like a, this is the thing that's a little concerning about it is it doesn't even have a like a clamp or a compression. It just fits in there. <laughs> so keep that in mind. But you can see with just how low profile they are, that's what it's gonna take to fit in there because if you go with something that's larger, and you probably should put this on before you put them in, by the way. If you go with something that's larger, it's not gonna clear the, the top right there. So this is actually pretty convenient too because I can just hold it right on top and then I'll be able to mark my, uh, my cuts and then be able to put it in there. But we'll, we have to see how to get the tube in there too once it's done. It's, it might be easy because one of these can rotate. One thing I wanna point out too though is that wherever the tubing goes on top of any other ports, you lose, you lose the access to those ports. So we're gonna lose, with that 90 degree run, we lose one, two, three, four, five options if we needed those on the other side. So that's why they give you 32 because they're just like, well, you got 32 different 
ability, like ways that you can run stuff through this. So nothing says too with the 12 millimeter, you can do some pretty tight bends with 12. The wall might want to crush, so make sure you're using a really good um, mandrel tube insert for it. That way it doesn't have any slack. If it can wiggle around in there, then when you bend it, it'll oval out the hole and then the gaps will make it look weird. So, but you might be able to like, do like an S or something crazy in there. But I think sticking to 90 degree bends are probably the best idea. So that should work. And like I said, these are not, they're not compressions. So I just have to try and twist them in there without making the O-rings get cut. Okay, there's one. Here we go. I think I, did it wrong though. I think I have to flip it because <laughs> it's all in your oh, yeah. I might have actually trimmed it a little too short too. <laughs> okay, no, you're I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, there's that. But you get the idea, okay? You get the idea of how that would go inside. So, yeah, I, I wish that these were compressions because I just have a better peace of mind with compression. The, the, the good news is if one of these pops off inside, it's still contained. Your loop will just stop flowing. <laughs> It'll just bypass itself, whatever the least resistance is back to the reservoir once it gets pumped back out again. But at least it won't leak in your system or whatever. Um, but yeah, just 90 degree bends is what is all you need. I think that would still actually hold. It's, it's, it's in both O-rings. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> Dang it, I made it slightly too short. What I think is interesting though is their silver fitting. This is their titanium. The, it's exactly the same thing for black, but only it's not this nice knurled shape. <laughs> but I mean, you get the power of the D5. The D5 pump is excellent at overcoming um, long tube runs and a lot of, so they're really good at flow. They're not the best at um, pressure. The DDC, I don't think this, this doesn't even have a DDC version. The DDC is really good at pressure but doesn't have the best, best flow rate because it's like a higher RPM impeller. It's a smaller impeller. It spins faster, good for pressure, but it's like horsepower with no torque. Well, this is all torque with no horsepower, if that makes sense. So I think the D5 was probably the right move just because it, I've used D5s in everything. I've never had an issue with the D5 not being able to overcome stuff. SATA powered, so that's nice to see. Not sleeved, just black cable. So you can't really sleeve it unless you can somehow depin this, which not really gonna happen with the SATA plug. And then same thing with the PWM and RPM signal, not sleeved. Would have been nice to see these sleeved, but especially for 500 bucks, just some nice tight black sleeving on there would have been nice. $490, not including the price of fittings. Now here's the kicker. These fittings were like $15 each. So we're already at 30 bucks, and I think they were like 10 for the compressions. So now we're at 50 bucks in fittings just for that one. So now we're at $540 USD before tax for just what you see right there. I'm gonna use it. You know I'm going to. I really wanna see how this, how this looks and feels and is to work with, with having the reservoir pump combo, also part of this distro plate thing, with having 32 options works. I wanna have two of them in a build, but then we'd be talking like, Easily $2,000 plus worth of water loop for one loop. <laughs> Yikes. All right, there you go. Just a quick unboxing and kind of first look at this thing. Steve was like, Jay, you got to do something with it. And I plan to. Just, I guess I got to figure out the case I want to use it in. Like I said, it can go in anything that uses two 140 millimeters. Um, and the thing is like, once you put it back together, the, the flat part, that's the part that faces out outside your, your glass or whatever, and the pump faces in for obvious reasons. And this pump cover is also metal. It's, it's really heavy, dude. Like this whole thing is very heavy. All right, there you go. What do you think I should do with it? What case do you think I should use it with? I mean, it's like the obvious 011 dynamic, right, is that Corsair 5000 series cases have uh, provisions for two 140s like in the front or even on the back panel side. But give me an idea. Sound off down below what case you think I should use for this and it'll be interesting. It might actually make it convenient because of the fact that I only have to worry about going from component the, to this thing. And then I guess rads to that thing. Then I'm gonna run out of space in this thing real quick. 